I have so many products to talk about. I don't even know where to start. If you missed part one of this video, you can check out my February favorites. I'll link it on the screen above. But first, just want to take a second to introduce myself. I'm Kate, if you're new here, and I tend to look at products through a critical eye. I really like to maintain more of a minimal collection, so I'm super picky about what makes it into my final makeup drawers. And that helps to save you money in the process. You know, these days everyone's saying, you need this, you need this, go buy this now. I would rather be the opposite. I'd rather give you a reason not to purchase something Something, then give you a reason to purchase it and that way when I really rave about something you know that I truly truly love it and now let's get into my fails I'm gonna start with an entire brand unfortunately I got an extremely generous PR package from a brand called code 8 beauty and I don't know much about them except I believe they're based in the UK and I think Alexa Chung was their brand ambassador and now they've expanded to the US I've hated every single thing that they sent me and I feel so bad but I just gotta be real with you take this concealer for example this is the code 8 seamless concealer they have three shades I mean already we're not off to a very good start and this is NW15 which is the lightest concealer shade as you can see on me it's really yellow so unfortunately it makes me look a little bit sick when I wear it and it also sets down to like a really dry matte finish it just it really is not flattering on the skin at all and they also sent me the radiate beauty bomb which I'll pump on the back of my hand. Again, just so yellow. Like something I just, I can't even wear. And I might find a shade on their website. I know in the Beauty Bomb they had a lighter shade, maybe two lighter shades, but you can either get one that is like almost pure white or more yellow shades. They didn't have a really wide variety of undertones and also their shade ranges are extremely limited. Then they sent me their Code 8 Glaze and the print is so small. It looks like the shade name is Gaia, but I honestly can't really tell and I tried it on, on my lips and just watch this. It is like so incredibly sticky. Do you see that? It's just like really tacky and just kind of heavy on the lips. It's basically a liquid lip balm and it also has this incredibly artificial like melon scent that really throws me off. This also isn't a shade that I would ever wear. And I think part of the reason I'm bummed about Code 8 is because anytime a brand reaches out and says they want to send me PR, I'll always take a look at their website and I'll share the shades that I think are best suited for me because because I always want to give a brand the best shot at giving me a positive experience and color really does play a huge part in that. You know, if you have a foundation or a lipstick that it's a color you don't like, you're going to skew towards a negative review. And unfortunately, they did give me their kind of standard PR box that has pretty much all like orange and red shades, which I just really don't reach for. So I'm very grateful that they were so generous and sent me a lot of products, but the colors and the formulas just really are not for me. Take this next one. This is just their blush mood reflecting cheek palette in rosé. Watch this. Falls right out. Just immediately came unglued. It's just everything kind of is designed really cheap, but it feels like a kind of Estee Lauder knockoff. You know what I mean? Like it gives me very much Estee Lauder vibes, which is strange because Alexa Chung to me does not seem like the kind of person who'd be an, an Estee Lauder girl. She'd be more like a Glossier girl, but this makeup brand is not about minimalism. And I don't know, maybe that's not fair. Alexa Chung isn't like a minimalist, but I don't know, this just seems very much old school, like traditional makeup than Alexa Chung, who was an it girl. Okay, then they sent me their Arch Realist brow pencil, which is so light brown, it didn't even show up on my brow hairs. They sent me this very burnt orange lipstick, which I haven't tried because I honestly would rather just put this in a giveaway box and give it to someone else untouched because I don't wear oranges. In that same formula, they also gave me this bright, bright red lipstick, which I would rather just pass to someone and, you know, make sure it goes to a loving home. But I did try this one and it's kind of a rose shade. So I'll try that on again. I'm so sorry, by the way, the lighting is all over the place. One second it's sunny, the next minute it is hailing and I don't understand lighting and photography enough to figure out how to make it look good. So let me just zoom in really quickly and show you Saint Germain, which is the cream lipstick. Yeah, it's heavy. It's kind of like sticky, very pigmented because it is kind of heavier on the lips. I think it's gonna last a long time, not gonna like slide around the mouth. And it has a bit of a marshmallow scent. It just, it doesn't feel special at all. So that one I'm decluttering as well. And they sent me another lipstick in that same formula, which is Roaring Twenties, a very, very dark red. Again, not something I'd ever wear. So I would rather pass this on to someone who's gonna use it and love it. And then they sent this lip liner, which is their Lip Surrealist in the shade Salvador. And it's okay. 
Very pigmented, kind of a drier formula, not very easy to blend, but it's not a bad liner. It's just not anything special, much like the rest of the brand. I think you can see like I'm trying to apply it and it's really pigmented. And then as I blend, it's just like, stuck. It just drags. It's not very creamy. I just, yeah, I, I hate it. And then they also sent me another lip liner, a bright red one in that same formula, which I will also be passing on. And then they sent me this matte velour contouring lipstick in this bright red shade. And again, it's just not something I would ever wear. And I would rather, instead of trying it and then having to find someone who will take used makeup, I would rather just be able to like throw this in someone's giveaway box or donate it to a women's shelter or something like that where it can really get, you know, some love. Same thing for this one. This is in Lima and it's their matte velour contouring lipstick. More more of like a rosy nude so I'll try this one and it's just very drying so drying they're a little bit grainy a little bit dry Oof, I really don't like it and then at that point I was just like you know what I'm just not even gonna try the eyeliner or the mascara because truth be told I only wear tubing formulas anyways because they don't flake and they don't smudge and they remove with warm water because I do giveaways on my Instagram and I'll sell products and then I'll always include a ton of unopened PR anytime someone buys a product through me and I would rather just be able to give these to someone who wants them because I can't sanitize a mascara. Anyways, I was gonna do a brand review for Code 8. It would just be that. It would just be super negative and it wouldn't be very helpful and it definitely wouldn't be helpful to the brand. So I don't know, if you guys know anything about Code 8, especially if you've tried them, what are your thoughts? Because I don't know, I thought that I would like something from the brand, but everything was a huge fail. The packaging also feels really cheap, like really, really thin plastic. I just, yeah. Can't say I'm a fan. Unfortunately, I also had a bit of a negative experience with the brand Gen C. They were so nice. They gave me a beautiful selection of products. Again, a similar thing where they reached out to me. I said, hey, here's what looks really interesting to me on the website. Here are the colors that would be best suited for my preferences. And they sent like the total opposite of the colors, you know, that I requested. And I think it's an interesting conversation because on one hand, as a creator, you're super, super gracious and so thankful to be able to get free products so that you don't have to buy them to review them. At the same time, I really feel like if brands just gave every influencer a Google, like a link to a Google sheet to fill out the products they're most interested in and the colors they're most interested in, I feel like we would really, A, the brand would get better reviews that are more positive. B, there would be less waste because influencers wouldn't be, you know, just decluttering the colors that they don't want. And a lot of brands do that, which is awesome. And they'll totally listen to the preferences you have. And a lot of other brands don't, and they just send out one standard package. But, you know, if we were thinking about how to be more strategic about it, I feel like that would be a good way to do it is with Google Sheets. But anyways, I digress. I've already filmed my Gen C brand review. So I'm just gonna speed through all of the reviews of these products. The mascara did absolutely nothing for my lashes. It's this massive one that's really hard to use because it's so big and it just, it didn't do anything. It didn't lift my lashes. It didn't make them look voluminous. It didn't make them look lifted. It didn't make them look longer. It just, it did nothing for me. The brow gel is the most pigmented brow gel I've ever tried in my life. There is no amount of wiping off the wand that will get this to be sheer enough to look natural. It just makes my lashes look so incredibly heavy and thick and it just looks so makeup-y. It's very bizarre. This is also the lightest shade, which is taupe, and it is way too dark and a little bit too yellow for me. So that was also a fail, which is not surprising because this entire video is about fails. And these just did not do anything for me. I think my favorite shade is Dragon Fruit, which is a beautiful warm pink. But when it's applied on the skin, it just is so sheer. It blends the pigment out immediately. And all you're left with is like an oily cheek from the kind of dewiness and the slip that's in this formula. And because of that, when you blend away that pigment, it also blends away your foundation underneath. So I found it to be incredibly difficult to use. I also hate the packaging of this because it's such a liquid formula and you know, it's like super pigmented, but then the pigment just immediately goes away. I'll show you. So you try to only squeeze a tiny bit out and already that is 
way too much. And that was like the tiniest bit I was trying to squeeze out. And then you're left with all of this product, which doesn't make sense to me because their brand is all about sustainability, which is awesome. And in my brand review, I talk all about how great Gen Z is in terms of their values. They have this awesome mission towards better packaging, less packaging, a recycle program, inclusivity and diversity practices. Like they really are the one brand I've found that checks all of the boxes I care about in terms of my values. So I really, I truly, truly wanted to love them. I truly wanted to make these products work. I tested them for a month before I filmed the brand review because I really didn't want to be negative. You know, I really gave it my best shot is what I'm trying to say. And these blushes, oh, such a bummer. And then the products that I think are okay, but I'm still going to declutter are the lip gloss, the eyeshadow, and the lipstick. I'll say probably my favorite out of them is the lipstick. It's a nice formula. It's just not, it's not reinventing the wheel here. It's like a stiffer, lipstick formula. It has a matte finish. And this color is just not something that I would reach for in a really pigmented bullet lipstick formula. It's just so pink. It's not very me. And I did feel like my lips were kind of dry by the end when this wore off. So then I put the lip gloss on top of it to see how that would go. And I liked the gloss at first. I was really impressed. I liked the like super flexible paddle applicator. And it's a kind of liquid lip balm formula. It's like really thick. It's super grippy. And it's even a little bit sticky. And I was like, okay, cool. I can get on board with this. I love a thicker gloss. I love a gloss that doesn't just slide around my mouth. This is cool. I also really like Gen C's packaging. And then as this started wearing off, I noticed my lips were just stuck together. It was like peeling my lips apart to get my mouth open. And that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I just wanted to, you know, let you know that it starts off thick and grippy and ends up being really sticky. And so you'll see the way that that looks when I did a wear test in my Gen Z video, but bit of a bummer. Now let's get into the individual products and I'm going to start with some concealers and I'm going to start with this Kosas Revealer Concealer. Y'all, I don't know. I call bullshit and I'm not from the South. I don't know where that came from, but I felt very impassioned in the moment. I don't really understand how this has been the most hyped viral concealer of the past few years. I feel like every celebrity uses this. Every YouTuber uses this. Everyone talks about this concealer and it looked horrible on me. Man, I reviewed this years and years ago and I'll leave my original Kosas Revealer Concealer video linked above. And then I got this shade 1.5C, hoping it would be a better match for me. The whole Kosas line is about as yellow as the cap. It's so yellow. Their shade expansion was terrible. There are no shade matches for me. And you know, that's always a bummer, but I'm white so I can make most things work. It just kind of looked a little cakey. It looked heavy. It didn't keep the coverage. It kind of blended it away. It didn't look flattering on my under eyes. And I don't know why, because everyone I see seems to love this concealer. Amanda Z says it's her holy grail favorite. It's perfect. It like blurs her under eyes. And I just did not have that same experience. It looked really bad on me. And I will leave a link to my video where I do a get ready with me reacting to your unpopular opinions. I use this all over my face and under my eyes, and you'll see that I don't look very good. <sighs> Another shade expansion that broke my heart. Say's Hydra Beam Concealer range. I love this concealer so much. I'm not a light to medium coverage concealer girl, and that says something that I love a light medium concealer. This really does seem blurring. It really does seem to just make your under eyes look a little bit more youthful. It's beautiful. But again, they just mess up the shade selection. And this is kind of a complaint I have about Say. Their products are really beautiful. I really, really love their formulas, but I have an issue with their colors, whether it's the Sun Melt Bronzer, the Slip Tint, the concealers. There's never been a match for me in any of those ranges. And I'm just kind of like, come on guys, it's not that hard. So these are the shades HB half, which you can see is incredibly fair with more yellow undertones. And this is HB one, which is very fair with cool pink undertones. And both of these are way too light for me. My hand is much lighter than my face. And I'll insert a picture here of when I swatched all the shades on my hand at Sephora. You can see they're just incredibly yellow. So HB one and a half and HB two just don't work for me either. So I wanted to love them, but they just don't look good on me because of the colors. Next, we have the Tower 28 Sculptino in the shade Broad, and it's spelled B-R-O-A-D, but it's pronounced Broad because they named the whole line after museums, and this is the Broad Museum. This, they said, is a contour product, and I saw that they have since kind of backtracked a little bit. I, I think I noticed on the Sephora website, it now says Sculptino contour and bronzer. 
because I think so many people were saying that these shades are very, very warm. It doesn't really make sense that they're a sculpting product. I went on a massive rant about these and just the marketing for them. And here's the thing, you can use products however you want and you should. It should not matter what the marketing is for a product. Use it however you want. You see a color you want to contour with, contour with it. You know what I mean? Do what makes you happy. You don't have to follow the rules of what a brand says you're supposed to use a product for. With that being said, I feel that there's a responsibility as an influencer to, you know, point out marketing that doesn't match what the product is. Because the thing is, this is a bronzer. It is super, super yellow. I'll show you on the back of my hand. You just can't convince me in any world that that's a contouring product. It's, it's ridiculous. It made my face look yellow and it's too yellow for me to even be used as a bronzer. So the thing is the color just clearly doesn't work for me at all, either as a contour or a bronzer. And that's something that I also have a problem with with Tower 28. I didn't have a match in their tinted moisturizer range. They were either too yellow or too dark on me or too light. My point is that as an influencer, I feel a responsibility to point out when the marketing doesn't match what the product actually is, because then it can save people money. Because if someone gets this product and they wanted a contour product, but they get it and they see that it's just super, super yellow and it's more of a bronzer, they may already have a bronzer and they didn't want another one, you know? So personally, this whole thing just didn't work for me. And you should watch the video where I go on a long rant about this. And I analyze the content they posted about this on their Instagram. And in terms of the shade range with Tower 28, generally they only launch like four colors for their bronzers, for their contour products. It falls a little bit flat for me. And that's saying something because they send me all their products in PR and they still kept me on the PR list and I'm still grateful for it but I will always be super honest in my feedback. And unfortunately, I just haven't found a Tower 28 product that I love except for their lip liners. Let's move on to some lip products for a second here. I haven't talked about this on my channel yet. This is the Suku. I'm not actually sure how to say that brand name. I realized I have never actually watched anyone review them before. Uh, I hope I said that right, but please correct me if I'm wrong. It's the Treatment Wrapping Lip Gloss. And I got the shade 01, which is this nice pretty pink color. I'm gonna put it on. So you get a nice little flexible paddle applicator. And it's supposed to be basically a liquid lip balm. And I thought maybe there'd be like a little color, but there's not. It's completely clear, totally fragrance free. And it just, it does nothing. It gives nothing. It's not particularly glossy, doesn't really smooth over lip lines, doesn't really feel particularly nourishing. When it wears off, my lips don't feel better or worse. There's no color. This does nothing. So yeah. This was a big waste of money. I'm just going to reapply the product I was wearing, which is the Lisa Eldridge gloss in blush. Next, I tried the Wet n Wild Rose Comforting Lip something? Lip balm? I'm not sure. It doesn't say. In Taffy Daddy. And this has, oh, it's like a rose vinegar scent. It's rose flowers, but there's this sour quality to it. Oh, it's gross. It's a really gross scent. Also, I'll show you up close. It's so thin and oily. It just melts all over the side of the packaging. So it has a very similar component to the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss lipsticks that I love, but those are really thin thick and nourishing and they are just occlusive and lovely. And this is just a thin, oily, smelly mess. I was really excited to try the Violette Bisou Balm in Suset. It looks beautiful and it has a really nice, lovely, subtle vanilla scent. This color is beautiful. It's just this bright, bright reddish pink and I think it's stunning on the lips. The problem is it is so incredibly drying and I'm sad because it really does look like, like fabric. It, it just looks like so matte and so blotted and blurred. It is a beautiful effect. It, it just, it looks great and I love the texture of it. So I was bummed because I had heard that they reformulated this to make it more moisturizing. And if this is the reformulation, I don't even wanna know what the original one was. So unfortunately for me, this looks beautiful, but it's just too drying. I also did a Victoria Beckham brand review. So spoiler alert, I do love the Victoria Beckham Posh lipsticks, but this shade, girl, just really, it did not work out for me. It's like a very, very gray, nude, gray, yellow, beige. And on the website, I just feel so so duped. It looked like a light pinky nude, which would be really good for me as just like an almost concealer lips kind of vibe, but you know, just a good nude to go with a smoky eye. And it's not. Even looking at it now, it's like super gray. So here's the shade Girl. You can see it's just like 
this kind of yellow gray nude. It's just, it's not cute on me. And I do find that for the most part, Victoria Beckham's website has pretty accurate artificial swatches, but not for the lip products. For the lipsticks in particular, I feel like are just way off, but this is the one lip, whoa, I dropped it. One lip product that did not work for me. If you watched my affordable beauty haul or my what's new at Ulta video, you will know that this one really did not work out for me. It's the Makeup Revolution Ceramide Swirl Lip Gloss, and this smells like, oh, burned rubber, smoky rubber. Oh God, it is so bad. It is so, so, so bad. And I just wish that someone had pointed out the smell of this. Like if someone had said this smells like rubber, I wouldn't have wasted my money on it. Furthermore, this is the gloopiest product I've ever tried. It creates strings between my lips. Whoever created this, I think should probably get put on leave temporarily because this is the most horrific product I've ever tried. And I cannot believe this made it through product development onto the shelves because I can't see a single person liking this. Sorry, not sorry. Let's take a break from lips for a sec. And I just wanna talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. If you've watched my channel, you know that the Pillow Talk shade has just become an absolute holy grail for me. I love it. Perfect amount of pigment, perfect blendability, and it lasts all day. But these two shades really didn't work out for me. Dream Pop, um, just it just like stained my cheeks. And so you would put it on and then as you start blending, you're like, Oh God, oh no, it's setting already and it kind of already stained. And I just find that experience with red blushes and red eyeshadows, any red pigment tends to be very staining. And so I don't think it's necessarily just Charlotte Tilbury as a brand, their fault. It's something that I experience in general. But I think that people with deeper skin tones will have less of an issue with that because there won't be such a high contrast between the color and their skin. It's probably gonna blend in a lot better and it is a beautiful shade, but for me, it was just difficult to work with. And then this damn shade, Pink Pop. Come on, Pink Pop, what, oh, come on. There's no world in which this is a pink. This is a peach, and it, it is looking a little bit more pink on camera right now, but I'm telling you, this is just a peach, and it's so sheer, three layers of this blush didn't even show up on my pale ass face, so that was a fail. Next, these Moira at Glance stick shadows. Skip them, not worth the money. I'll leave my Mora video linked on the screen above. They're just really stiff. They're super dry. They're difficult to blend. And then they're just so heavy on the lids. I have this theory that Moira is a brand kind of like Makeup Revolution that specifically tries to dupe products because this to me feels exactly like the matte eyeshadow crayons from nude sticks and I hate those. Those were heavy and sticky and set down and then they would crumble off of my eyes and I have the same experience here. So if you like the matte eyeshadow crayons from nude sticks, then you might actually really like these. But personally for me, I think there are way better formulas out there. If you ever hear me say that I don't like testing mascara, this is why. There are only two mascaras that truly, truly have my heart and get a 10 out of 10, check all my boxes. The Thrive Mascara and the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara and the Pink Tube, the one that's like washable. These are all for washable mascara. They don't flake or smudge and they come off with warm water. It's such a better experience. So let's start with the most expensive, which is Victoria Beckham, the Future Lash. This is the one I probably liked the most. It didn't flake or smudge. It removed very easily with warm water, but it didn't do anything for me. It didn't lift, volumize, lengthen. You can see in the clip, it's just, it's just not doing anything. It's just like, the most natural lash effect ever. And the wand is so small and thin that I keep kind of working the wand in between my lashes and I keep kind of wiggling it in there, but nothing's happening. So I have to flip it. And then I just use the little pokey end and it just doesn't do anything for me. I've had a lot of friends say that this is their absolute holy grail, but for me, it just didn't work. I was so excited to try the Milani highly rated lash extensions tubing mascara because I thought it would be a dupe for the Thrive and it, it looks like it. It's the same kind of wand and everything, but this does not perform like the Thrive. My Thrive is my ultimate number one. And if I can remember, I will just try to drop in a clip here of me applying the Thrive mascara so you can see what it looks like in the final results of how lifted and lengthened and black and volumized it is. It's just perfect. And this kind of did something a little bit similar. So unfortunately it doesn't have the same kind of wearing power as the Thrive. This smudged, it flaked, and also 
also it just it wasn't as powerful it didn't lengthen as much didn't volumize as much didn't lift as much so it was just kind of a wah, wah. another wah, wah is the la girl lift off mascara also a washable formula this is their instant lash lifting definition mascara i really didn't like the wand of this it is this like ball at the end which is really awkward to use you're just kind of like slowly trying to work the ball into your lashes and it takes a long time to apply. This was actually out of the four fails here. This was my favorite appearance, which is great because I think it's just like $6.99. LA Girl has awesome prices, <sighs> but I was so sad because at the end of the day, it just smudged all under my eyes. And it says that this is like their smudge proof formula, smudge proof, it is not. And lastly, the old controversial one, we've got the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara. Now this is, controversial because of the ad from Michaela where she applied false lashes allegedly and you know didn't mention it and just said it was all the mascara that launched a frenzy of people purchasing the mascara and buying it and reviewing it and it like sold out everywhere so whether that was a mistake or not maybe maybe that was intentional and hats off to L'Oreal and Michaela because that mascara sold like hotcakes that was sarcasm I do not condone false advertising and misleading information anyways this mascara is so wet and thick. It was so gloopy on my lashes. It really weighed them down. I tried using this mascara every which way because there's this specific way to use it. And it just made my lashes so flat and they were heavy and weighed down. And it's a bummer. I've seen so many people apply this and they look amazing. Friends of mine who I dearly, dearly trust who have specifically told me that they love this. And yeah, it just didn't work for me. I must have like really weird lashes. I don't know. There must be something about me. It's gotta be me that's broken and not all these mascaras. Two more lip products and then I'll let you go. We've got the Maybelline. Nope, this Milani. It does not say what these lipsticks are. I think they're the like color something lipstick bombs or something like that. I've got the shades Crave and Nylon and I'll show you Nylon first. It is a very, very thin, slippery, oily formula. And because the bullet is this kind of larger round shape, it really just slides right outside my lip lines. It's super messy to apply and it's also really pigmented. And so it just gets way too messy on my lips. And I purchased these because of like a really beautiful TikToker who has beautiful full lips. And she just like applied this with one swipe and like looked at the camera and looked like an absolute goddess. But that's what I get for trusting TikTok videos because TikTok is a place, it exists for a reaction to either be the most beautiful gorgeous thing you've ever seen or the worst most horrendous thing ever it's my fault for buying something because of tiktok but i also got the shade crave which i thought would be a really fun summer color but it's a little bit too orange and too bright for me i thought it was gonna be a little bit more of like a sophisticated coral but it's very much like a drugstore coral and to me some of the like the two main differences between a drugstore brand and a more luxury brand a the packaging obviously but b colors i feel like the colors of luxury brands are oftentimes a lot more nuanced and drugstore brands tend to have more straightforward colors and i think i really gravitate towards more of the nuance of those other brands like indie brands and luxury brands so unfortunately these did not work out and lastly we have the tower 28 juice bombs these are just so been there done that but it's been done much better than these it's just a lip crayon in you know very young packaging the bullet is really round so it's pretty messy especially on my upper lip the shades shake and mix are so sheer they're almost clear so really didn't do anything for me and these are probably one of the thinnest most oily slippery non-nourishing products i've ever tried they just make my lips feel so dry once they wear off and they slide around my lip lines they're messy the packaging looks really juvenile these are the four shades mix shake drink and squeeze these two are the sheer ones. These two are the pigmented ones. This level of pigment in this thin and slippery of a formula with this big round applicator makes absolutely no sense for me. It's a real head scratcher for me. It just feels so lackluster to me. You know, it's, what were those Revlon ones? The Color Stay Balm crayons? I forget what they were called. Or the Clinique like Chubby Stick Balms. You know, both of those were better. They had better shade ranges. They had a sharper tip so you could be more precise with your application. These only have four shades. Unfortunately, these are just the antithesis of 
everything I like in a lip product. So hard pass for me. Well, I need to go play with some good makeup because that was a real bummer, but I hope you understand that, you know, I'm not just trying to be negative and rip on brands. I really want to help save you money. So if your preferences align with mine, maybe skip some of these and stay tuned. I have lots of great content coming up, lots of really good fun brand reviews and tag videos. And so if you appreciated this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And wherever you are, I hope you're having an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.